Hello everyone, I'm Tom and today I'd like to show you how to use DaVinci Resolve 12 for time-lapse processing and why it might be a good idea. Because it's fast, it works with any format and it's free. It supports CR2 natively, it also supports DNG, which means that we can convert any raw files to DNG and work within DaVinci Resolve. So today we are going to test uh, the workflow using After Effects to compare it, how it works with DaVinci Resolve. So we're gonna be working with uh, two sequences. One is CR2 sequence coming from a uh, Canon 5D Mark III and the other one is NEF sequence coming from Nikon D800. So first of all, let's convert NEF files into DNG using Lightroom. Let's select all the frames, right click and export as DNG. Okay, so let's try After Effects first. Let's open both sequences and create uh, compositions for each sequence. Both are 1080p, uh, 16 bits. Okay, let's try to see the first sequence. Unfortunately, it takes 20 seconds to actually load the first frame. Uh, we want to resize uh, the footage to, to fit the frame. Uh, let's do the same with the second one. And here actually we don't want to resize. We want to use one-to-one -one, uh, crop ratio. Uh, just, just to see the spider and the fly nicely. Let's try to play it back. I hit space and nothing. We're still waiting. That's the second frame and that's the third frame. It's playing back actually with 0.26 frames per second. It's four seconds per frame. And when we look at the CPU and GPU usage, we can clearly see that GPU is not used at all. Everything is done by CPU here. Let's try the injury sequence. Hit space and wait. 22 seconds later, we can clearly see that it's going much slower. It's actually 0 0.091 frames per second. And when we check the graphs, again, GPU is idle. And it's the same speed when we try to export out of After Effects. So for these example sequences, it's it would take hours to export them uh, to, for example, ProRes HQ. Okay, now let's have a look at DaVinci Resolve. Let's import both sequences into the media uh, window. And let's create timelines for each sequence. Okay, let's have a look at the first one. And uh, let's try to play it back. Okay, much better. We can see that it's reaching even 9 frames per second, right off the bat. And after applying some of the adjustments, it drops to 4 5 frames per second. But still, good enough. If we check the graphs, there's a huge difference. The GPU is used at 100%. So DaVinci Resolve is using GPU as much as it can. And when we add smart caching, after a few minutes of waiting, we can actually get real-time playback. Okay, let's try CR2 sequence. If we try to play it back, it goes up to 12 frames per second right off the bat with no adjustments applied. And if we grade it a bit, if we add OpenFX plugin on top of that, we still get four frames per second. Okay, but what about other RAW formats? Sony A7R2, maybe? 
Sadly, I don't own this camera, but I found some samples over the internet, uh, specifically on uh, on website photographyblog.com. Uh, I downloaded one sample frame from Sony A7R2. I copy pasted in 250 times and imported a sequence into DaVinci Resolve. Uh, let's create a timeline out of it and let's see what happens. And it plays back. I applied some adjustments and also added one OpenFX plugin on top of that and we can get 3-4 frames per second. Keep in mind that one frame from Sony A7R2 is around 45 megabytes. So it's a bit more data to process than with the previous sequences. Okay, that's that's all for today. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, please subscribe and see you next time.